All right, all right. Well, I want to show you, uh, this is a filament dryer from Fix Dry. Uh, now, I have to say, one of my main accessories that I use with all my printers, uh, it's, it's a good filament dryer. You know, we all know how important it is to keep your filament dry. Uh, all these filaments, they're, they're hydroscopic at some, at, at some level, right? Some more than others. Um, and whether you keep them in a sealed bag, uh, trying to keep them dry, uh, sooner or later you, you're going to need to dry them out in a dryer, right? You take them out of the bag, uh, put it in the dryer, and you can let it dry for, you know, six hours or so, or let it dry for three or four hours, and... Um, and a lot of times you can feed it directly into your printer and print with them, you know, while the while it's still circulating, while it's still drying. Um, there's a few different types that you can use. Um, if you're drying in bulk, I've seen guys that, you know, put them in an oven, right? In an actual oven, you just got to make sure you have your temperature set correctly, um, and or like a, a dehydrator, like a food dehydrator, uh, and you can stack them in there. And once again, you got to make sure your temperatures are set correctly. Uh, if it's too hot, or you know, getting bad circulation, you know, in your oven or whatever, your your filament could not only dry out, but it'll actually start sticking together, and you know, bad news. So you got to really pay close attention. You see a lot of these everywhere. Some of them are a, a single chamber. Uh, and this one, as you can see, it's a double. And you can put them in here. You can put your, this one will fit uh, a couple of spools of filament or one large one. Um, and on the controls, and you have control of, uh, you know, the temperature and the humidity setting and, and the time and all that good stuff. Well, let's take a look at it a little closer. And before we get started, remember to check out our website, v3precision.com. You can check out our growing number of products and services, and even some uh, pretty cool shirts. So, let's get started. Now, there are a few um, specs that you need to take a close look at when you're choosing your, your dryer. Um, some of these dryers, like the one I had over here, uh, the temperature will go up to 50 degrees C, and that's fine with like PLAs, uh, especially PLAs, maybe some PETGs, um, stuff like that. It, it, it can dry on those lower levels, but if you're using, uh, say, some different nylons or ABS, um, uh, you really need it to go about uh, 70 degrees C, all right? It takes a little higher heat and sometimes a little more time to uh, to dry those out, and and that's why you need to look at the, the uh, if you, if you're using a dehydrator, a lot of times they're they'll be drying at 100 or 120, and it's, that's just way too much, right? Make sure you're going to be at those levels 50, from from about 50 to 70 uh, works pretty well as long as you time it correctly, right? And I have to say I, I like the double capacity. So I can feed it one into one printer and one to another when they're side by side, or I can have both filament spools in there and when one, when one runs out, one is already dry and ready to go. You just, boom, you just pop it right in, uh, just feed the filament right in there and take out the empty spool um, and even put another one in there. So it just makes sure that you have uh, some dry filament handy, right? And that's basically what I was looking for. I do a lot of nylons, a lot of carbon fiber stuff, and a lot of ASA. And I like to get it up to uh, 70 degrees, and and I like the double uh, the double capacity. And this fixed dry does just that. Uh, when you're taking a look at this thing, um, let's power it on, and you can hear the the fan. Uh, kicked on so it has a fan on the bottom and it feeds uh, it'll pump the air up and out through these holes here and while it's heating I kind of like this it has the uh, uh, this deflector 
and you can feel the heat, right? If you can see that. You can, here's the heat, and you can feel the fan pushing it up. Um, well, that's directly onto, uh, that's blowing directly onto the filament, right? So you have this, this deflector here, and it kind of distributes. Yeah, you can see how it's much more distributed out along the whole bottom plane here. And so let's put that back on. And with this, you can put, um, it's showing like a 58% right now. Of course, there's nothing in here, and we just turned it on. Um, so we can set it 50, and let's see, let's see if it'll go all the way up to 70. There we go. And let's go back down to 50. And, and you can set the time. So there's your time right now, it's at five minutes. Yeah, so I usually uh, dry everything, you know, anywhere from six to 12 hours. Uh, and they give a chart uh, with nylons, of course, yeah, say nylons be 12 hours, uh, PLA, PVA, four hours, PP, uh, it's the ABS, two, two hours, ASA to four hours, and I'm usually uh, I'm usually drying for about six hours on my stuff. Uh, sometimes I'll, like I said, I'll dry it for a couple of hours and then feed the filament uh, directly into the printer and let it finish drying while it's actually printing and just moving slowly uh, in there. Uh, and nylon, 70 degrees at 12 hours. They give a pretty good chart in the uh, in the manual here. And this one actually, the, the capacities, it'll go from 40 to 70 degrees C and uh, time up to 48 hours if you need it. Well, let's see, I'm just gonna pop some filament in here. Um, here's some PLAs that I haven't really used a lot. I'll go ahead and pop it in while we're talking. You can see the rollers on here are very nice. All right. Fits nice and easy. You can see it's extra tall, it gives you a lot of extra clearance here at the top. So it's working away. We're looking at 34 degrees C since I turned it on. 34, it's up to 34 and 38 uh, percent humidity. And I set it for six hours so you can see we're only a few minutes into it. So, so you'll see uh, on the lid here when I put everything on it has multiple egress holes that you can put uh, you can feed your filament through right uh, and I believe it came with this PTFE tube that you can slide in here also and then feed your filament in and you can feed this tube up to your printer right and there's multiple holes here we've got three on the front Three on the back, on the top, two in the front here, and two more in the back. Um, plus the holes here, it looks to be like you could fit a fan up here if you wanted to. Uh, but anyway, there's there's plenty of holes here, which is a good thing when you're drying this stuff. Uh, it helps to have an opening so that your your uh, moisture can get out of the box. All right? I have one behind me here that. Uh, it does not have that, and while I'm drying, I have to kind of open the lid and let the, the moisture out of it, right? And 
and while it's going you can still hear it underneath uh, that fan is blowing everything up so it's going up and out the holes well everything seems to be working like it should um, you can see uh, I've been timing how long it took uh, I've been timing it and I put another uh, meter in there to register the humidity and they're both showing 32 degrees uh, they're both spot on um, time wise it uh, it took about 15 minutes to get up to 40 degrees C so it's that gradual slope up which is good you know we're always looking for at a, a longer time frame say it's six hours or so um, you still don't want it to blaze up that high too fast um, so it's just that gradual upkeep up up to 50 degrees C and then I'll double check on my thermometer inside here that I placed and make sure everything's you know together and it looks like they are so my pros with this um, I do like the double capacity I, I like having two spools dried I like having the extra one so if one runs out I, I have one ready to go you know with no waiting um, plus it's the extra room if I wanted the, the larger spool uh, I can throw some more spare desiccant in there and, and kind of dry it out um, well, so I like the fact that it uh, it'll go up to 70 degrees C. So now I can dry all my nylons and ASAs uh, that I use on this Bamboo Lab P1S, and because uh, I do print a lot with that, with with different nylons and carbon fiber stuff, and this seems to be a perfect match. I can set it right next to it, feed it directly into the printer, and uh, and dry all my nylons and carbon fiber stuff that I use. Um, I like the LED controls. They're very simple. Uh, it's a power on. You can uh, switch between uh, temperature and your time uh, and adjust accordingly, plus or up or down. Uh, so it's very simple to control, very visible. Uh, you can just glance at it and see what it's doing. Uh, I like that they included the shroud here at the bottom. Uh, to deflect the temperature. You don't want it just going directly up uh, into the filament. This kind of distributes it out evenly all the way through the box. And there are some cons about this. Uh, there are multiple access holes which it's great for ventilating everything out but I think there's too many. There's too many and there's no way to plug up the ones that you that you're not using at the time. Like at any given time I might only use two of them you know one for each uh, filament spool and it's great that it has access at the top and the, and the, the fronts or the, the sides but I'd like some way to either plug these up or uh, do away with some of them right but plugging them up while they're not being used uh, it will help for storage right um, the way it is now if if it's not drying well it's going to be attracting moisture again uh, there's no way to uh, to plug these holes up the way they have it set up and uh, and the same thing with uh, with the holes here on the top it looks like and I can feel it you know you can feel everything coming out uh, but I think I I would put a fan up here to draw everything out but have it so that when it's not in use in use you, you can close the holes right and so far that's my only con about this everything else it, it, it's it's fairly simple works like it should you know it's great um, but I think that's one of the main improvements I would uh, I would focus on long-term storage uh, with this also if you have two spools in here uh, there's got to be some way to seal this off and and still have some desiccant or whatever in here and uh, and use it for storage also because uh, at any, any given time even if I'm you know printing off 24 7 right uh, using this printer just day in and day out the spools stay in there for quite a long time still right so if you have everything sealed off it'll keep it much drier even if it's just for short-term storage but uh, that's probably what I would focus on
Yeah, so overall, I think it's a great dryer. Um, I think it's going to match up very nicely with my P1S. And, uh, and I'll enjoy using it. Um, if anything goes haywire with it, I'll let everybody know. But for now, it looks like it's working great. Um, I'll include links uh, in the description. Um, Fix Dry, they... You can get them on their website or on Amazon, and it looks like they, they hold uh, uh, discounts or sales quite frequently, so you can, you can find one fairly, a uh, fairly good price. Uh, but I'll include the links there. I'll have to thank Fix Dry for sponsoring this video. Uh, they did send this to me, and I'm glad they did. I think it's a very nice printer. Uh, it does need a couple of improvements, but I can do this myself. I can make little plugs for these things, right? And uh, and convert it over to a long-term storage uh, box. But but I guess that is it. So, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.